So what are you guys? We are the Sparkwood family. Can we do Doppler then? Yeah, let's do Doppler. Okay. So we did sound. Everything is okay with sound. We get it. We get it's affected by the temperature. We get it's affected by the medium. And we get that it's a longitudinal wave and it's mechanical. So no matter but energy transmitted. Okay, so now Doppler. Do you remember this? What's the effect of Doppler? Now we can give meaningful examples. Like if the siren's coming towards you, the frequency seems higher. higher. And if the siren's going away, the frequency seems lower. lower. And even though they're not exactly the same, what is frequency roughly? Do you perceive that as loudness? Or what do you just perceive frequency as? Pitch. Like high pitch or low pitch, right? Okay. That's not entirely true. Part of pitch depends on intensity. But for us, this is fine. It's good enough. Okay, so frequency is basically pitch. So we know this. Apparently, when the siren comes towards you, the pitch goes up. When it goes away, the pitch goes down. We're almost done. Then I just want to do this. Here are these sound waves propagating through space, just my little pictorial version of this. How do you perceive that frequency? This guy hits you, you count, it hits you once. Maybe it takes a second for this guy to reach you, one, one thousand. Then the next guy, one, one thousand, So because they're all moving together. So this gap, every time it hits you, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, that gives you your sense of frequency and pitch, right? Okay, no big deal. So now here you are, guy, girl, undecided. You decide to walk towards it. Not just do this with common sense. This first wave hits you just like it normally would. The second wave might take a second to travel towards you normally, right? If you sit stood still. But what are you doing? Yeah, so you're running towards it. So are you going to hit that wave sooner or later? Sooner. So now it's not like one, one thousand, two, one thousand. It's more like one, two, three, four. So now you see more cycles per second. So the frequency seems what? Higher. So I think the idea is if you move towards something, the frequency seems higher. Do you also agree that if you started to walk away, the first wave might hit you the same way. Then the second wave would have hit you when it got here, but you're no longer there. You've moved over this way. So it has to run and catch up to you. You guys agree? So apparently if you go away, the frequency seems to do what? decrease. That's the idea. Okay. That's very roughly the idea. And in this, ca this particular case, I think it's pretty good. Okay. Okay. So everybody believe that? All we're going to do is, if you believe this intuition, we're just going to slap it into a formula. Okay. I don't think it's worth your time deriving the formula, so let's just look at the formula. So the new frequency, oh by the way, what about the actual frequency emanating from that box, that transmitter? Was it the same or different? Same. same. This is your perceived frequency that you pick up. Okay. Okay, so we're going to say the new frequency that you perceive is, of course, based on the old frequency. Then it's going to have a factor in here. Okay? So it's always got to depend on the velocity of the medium. That's what V is, velocity in the medium. You don't have to memorize it. They'll give it to you. Then don't memorize these symbols because we're going to figure them out. I always write like this to show you it's variable. There's something you're going to have to figure out based on you, whether you're going towards or away. We'll call you the object. Some people call that the receiver. Same thing. And also based on the siren. Is it going towards you or away? So I'm going to call that the velocity of the source. Okay? okay well, don't worry. We're going to use this, and it'll be super mellow. It really will be. And once you can do these problems, you can do any Doppler problem. Okay? Okay. So here's our idea. Okay. There, is, there are shortcuts. First, always use your common sense. If what's going on is, if I'm talking to her right here, then obviously there's no change in frequency. If she were way closer to me, I'm still talking to her, still no change in frequency. If she were all the way across the room, we're still not moving, so the frequency would still be the same. You guys agree? Okay. If she were to start walking away at 10 meters per second, just using your gut, and I started talking to her, wouldn't it sound different to her? What do you think would make it fix itself so it sounded more like it used to? With, if she starts to walk away, if one, I just sit here. If I sit here, of course it's going to change because she's walking away, right? What if I start to walk the opposite way? Does it make it better or worse? worse? Worse. So what does your gut tell you? If she's going 10 meters per second that way, I probably want to go 10 meters per second that way, and probably the difference would be almost the same. Do you guys agree? So remember my promise, if you ever want me to draw something, please bring me a picture. Otherwise, everything will be a fish, right? <laughs> so this is, a, this is a submarine. It looks like a fish. It's just a submarine, OK? And the submarine has a little speaker, OK? Then we have another submarine heading towards it this way. Okay, and here you are on top of the submarine, and here's the submarine's eye, so it's all happy. Okay. okay. Yeah, that, this is another sub, and that's you on the sub. Okay, so happy. Okay, so this guy's going at, let's say, let's say this, let's say this guy's going 20 meters per second. 
and this guy's going at 10 meters per second. You might think this is silly and unnecessary because this is an easy example, but if you understand the way we're doing this, we can do any example with this, literally any example. Okay? So this guy I'm going to call the source because the sound's coming from there. I'm going to call you the object because you're going to pick up that sound. And my question for you is, if the frequency coming from this guy is, let's say, someone pick their favorite number. Five. Five? Okay. 1,500 meters per second. Okay? So if that's the, so if, sorry, not meters per second, I'm on crack. What am I doing? Hertz. Okay. So if it's 1,500 hertz, being eminent, so the frequency here is 1,500 hertz, what's the frequency you're going to hear? Okay? That's it. You do not need to memorize the speed of sound in water. So they will, of course, give it to you. 1533. Okay. Just as a quick comparison so we trust that it actually works. Does anyone know the speed of sound in air? Yeah, it's like 343, 340, whatever, something like that. But you can definitely see that in air, you are much slower than you are in water. Do you see that? So you're right. Gas is slower than liquid. Liquid is slower than solid. Okay. But anyway, they give this to you. You don't have to memorize that. Okay. So let's do this. You know it's about the frequency you perceive. You know guys are moving, so you're probably thinking what? Doppler. Doppler. So in this case, I have to, I mean, and I don't see an obvious shortcut other than the frequency should be higher. Does everybody agree? You're going towards each other, frequency should be higher. That might actually be enough to get the right answer. But in case they make us compute, because sometimes they do, we should try this and get used to how to apply this equation. Okay. And this method will always work. First is easy, just plug in. Bless you. The old one is what? 1,500? What's the velocity in the medium? 1,533. We don't even have to think about it. It's just there. In fact, we don't even have to think about any of these numbers because what's the velocity of the object? 10. Just put in 10. What's the velocity of the source? 20. We don't have to think about it. Just done. Okay. The only word comes in, what do you make those signs? So here's the advantage. We'll use common sense. We'll try. So you pick, who do you want to do first? The object or the source? Object. object. So this is the object. If you want to think about the object, freeze the source. Don't let it move. Okay? Even though absolute position doesn't matter, relative position does. So just freeze him. Don't let him move. Okay? Now you do your thing. You are the object. Are you going towards or away? Towards. towards. We just use our simple thinking. Towards means the frequency goes up or down. Up. You want the frequency to go up. You want this to go up. What sign should you put on this guy to make it go up? Positive. Positive. Done. That's it. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to do it again. Oops, sorry. Okay. Now let's do the source. If you want to think about the source, you freeze the object. Don't let him move. Now what are you doing relative to him? Going towards or away? You're, oh, sorry, the source. The source is going towards you, right? So again, the frequency should do what? It should go up. But because the number's on bottom, if you make the bottom bigger, it doesn't go up. It goes which way? Down. Down. So you need to make this a minus. minus. The other way to think about if that bugs you under pressure is you just think the bottom is always a flip. You want it to go up, it should be a positive. Because you're on bottom, it's a minus. But it's true. Bigger bottom means smaller number. Smaller bottom means what? Bigger number. This will always work. Okay? I'm going to give you different scenarios. But if you can do this, you can do anything. Okay? The trick is. Only do one case at a time. Don't try to do them together. Okay? So let's do this. So this was a, it turns out, camouflage submarine. So everything is the same except it tricked you. It's actually going, I guess, this way. Okay? So everything's the same, but now it's going to flip around and go that way. Okay? Okay. I don't